Okay, what, what happens in the next example is uh, we create a little program that interacts with a website, an FTP server, um, to create a multi-user chat room. In order to use this program, you need uh, access to a web server, an FTP server. Uh, you need to have the FTP address, a username, uh, and a password in order to make this work. Um, this uh, demonstrates a bunch of common techniques. Uh, it also creates a functional little, little uh, chat room. Uh, it has a password protected access for administrators. It's got uh, uh, a couple little things that show how to, for example, use, use passwords and to pause the activity. Um, starts out again with the standard rebel header. Uh, and the program is going to show this is called FTP chat room. Uh, start out by using a little request text. Um, uh, in that request text function, um, it's going to show the user that uh, it needs a web server address. Um, and it's going to show the default uh, FTP format that the user should type in, username and password, at a given website. And uh, it's going to store all this data in a file that we, that we give it. It's going to be called, by default, chat.txt. And it's going to go into the default um, uh, file location on an FTP server, but you can put your own uh, directory if you'd like. Uh, public HTML, for example, you can create a directory called chat, folder called chat if you'd like. Uh, you need to give the, uh, the text file a name, but it could be called anything you'd like. Um, and that gets requested um, from the user. So if this is going to be in production, you should probably want to put something with the actual username and password there um, and the actual text file name. Uh, and then next, um, we're going to get s another bit of text from the user, request text again, um, to get the user's name. And both of those pieces of information are assigned uh, to variable words. The first one is going to be called web server, and the name is going to be called name. So when we use the, the word web server later, it refers to that um, information that was given by the user. Uh, next, we're going to uh, create another little uh, word. This is going to be a function. This is the word does. And when that, what that does is it uh, clears the screen. This is the default code that you use to clear the screen in the Rebel interpreter. That was covered in an example earlier in the tutorial. Uh, so now I get a couple words defined that we're going to use as we go along. Every time we type in the word CLS, on that word, it'll, it'll clear the screen. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to write to that web server, that file on the web server, uh, some text, and that text is going to be this whole block of stuff joined together. Uh, it's going to contain the current time, time and date, um, and then uh, a colon, and it's going to have the name that was entered by the user. It's going to say that name has entered the room, and then it's going to print a new line. So all that stuff is joined together on one line. So basically it says time and date, uh, user name has entered the room. It's a new line. And again, here's some description of what's, what's going on. All of that's ignored by the rebel interpreter, anything after, um, after a semicolon. And so you see this write function, one of, the, uh, one of the little variations on the write function has that refinement called append. What that's going to do is not completely rewrite the file on the web server, but instead it'll append um, this current text to that file. Um, so it'll contain all the other text that was added by anybody else that's using this program. Everybody's writing that same file, and it just depends. So it appends that without erasing it, so that each person doesn't erase what other people have typed. It just shows all of that text. And the main part of this program runs in a forever loop. Forever loop just keeps on going, keeps on going until it's broken out of. Um, and the first thing it's done is. Uh, assign some data to this variable current chat, and that data is uh, whatever is currently read from that text file on the web server. Everybody that's using this program is reading from that file and writing to that file as they go along. Um, clear the screen, and then we print, again, a whole bunch of text here. So every time this forever loop runs, it prints this at the top of the page, and this is just like a little header. Uh, so there's a little line at the top to make it look nice, and, and a new line, and it says you're logged in as 
your name and the line, and it shows you some information. Um, there are some functions that we can use when uh, we're using this program. A couple of them are described here. It says if you type room, uh, you can switch to different chat rooms. That lets you add another user or another uh, text file um, in the web server um, uh, variable. Uh, you can type lock to pause it, you can type quit to get out, you can type clear to erase the uh, current chat. You can press enter and it will update the display. That's just a greeting that appears at the top of the page every time it's refreshed. Um, and then what it does, again we print some stuff all joined together. So here's the current chat text and then it joins that with this other stuff. Again, web server is the uh, the information at that uh, web server address. Prints another line, and, or, or it prints, I'm sorry, the, the address of the web server, and then it prints the information that was actually read above. Again, that current chat word was read at the beginning of this loop, so the data from the web server is printed out. Everything in that text file is printed out. So you see what anybody else has added to that text file, or appended to that text file. 